Hello, I'm Gareth N. Avis, and this is the Championship Rounds for Pitch Boxing, where I bring you all the interviews from the combat sports world. Enjoy. Man in Florida, Lawrence Ciccoli. Yes, yes, I am here. Last time I saw you in the Middle East, yeah. you were changing promoters. Now you're in Florida. You've changed trainers you're with Sugar Hill Steward. Lots of changes going on in your life, WBO Cruiserweight Champion. At least that hasn't changed. No. Gosh, yeah, I don't know. I thought, yeah, like I said there's been a lot of changes. Um, but I think all for the all for the best. I think, you know, um, world champion, I should be able to travel around. I should be able to um, expand on myself and just uh, and just grow in general. So, you know, um, all that matters right now that I'm a, a boxer is my boxing performances. So as long as it's all pushing in that direction, you know, I'll, I'll be I'll be happy. Are you kind of happily behind the promotional split and happy with your new, new deal now? Obviously, you're going into a fight. This weekend, you should have been fighting originally against David Light, defending okay. your title, wasn't it? Um, are yeah. you happy with your promotional situation now? Is everything settled? Obviously, you fight on March 25th in Manchester against David Light. You defend your title then. Yeah, I'm happy with my current um, promoter. Obviously, you know, me and my former one will sort what needs to be sorted out and um, I'll be sure to... Let you know how that goes, but um, outside of that, yeah, it's just you know I'm just really locked in on 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 this next fight on what I'm trying to build towards. You know, um, I want to build stables uh, in my future house. Do you know what I mean? So I need to really stay locked in now to be able to you know um to accomplish all those things. Are you on the point of thinking about? I mean, this in the right sense, empire building for yourself. Then trying to create empire legacy. A hundred percent, you know, um, ever since I started boxing, you know, I started quite late. So I already had my views on boxing and, you know, the people that I spoke to when I started boxing were experienced and had their boxing's a tough game. You know, they don't love you. Da, 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 like, And I got to see my favourite fighters retire um, without being too impressionable as a, as a child. Like, oh, the stars, I was very realistic. So... I saw all my favourite fighters, you know, from Britain retire. And then, you know, they had to go on and live with whatever they made. So for myself, although I, I, I always had the dream and the desire to be a world champion and, you know, arenas and all of that stuff, I always felt like I couldn't let it define me. Like, I'm always grateful and always blessed, you know, to say I've won a world title, I've defended it, I, I'm going to defend it again in a few weeks. I've headlined shows, I've, you know... Um, been somewhat popular, do you know what I mean? So it's like I've done all those things, but it, it never really I never really allowed it to define me. So but what I will allow it to define me is the empire, you know, um how much um residual and passive income I can make, you know, outside of boxing, you know, what kind of stuff I can do for my community, you know, where, are we gonna build gyms? Are we not like are we going to, like because that's the stuff that goes on, you know, past when I'm no longer able to run so many miles or punch so hard or whatever, those are the things that sort of carry on. Um, yeah, I, I hope that makes sense. Well, no, it does. It's wisdom beyond your years because that's something you look back in your 50s and you go, I didn't know that in my 30s. That's what you're mm. talking about, about, about genuine legacy. When you're young, you have all your health and you, you're, you're bustling along. As you get older, you don't have so much of your health. You have more time on your hands, you know, and there's, mm. more, there's more of... Life has its different stages. There's no question. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I've known you a long time now and you do pick wisdom out and try and bring wisdom into your boxing and your life. I, I know that about you. Um, who were those boxers, by the way? You just mentioned, just for record, that you saw them end their career and maybe they didn't have as much as they maybe should have had by the end of it. Who were those guys you were watching? Not, you were not, watching? not even they didn't have as much. Um, it's more so um, they the, the stuff that, you know, a lot of people idolise in boxing, i.e. being super famous, being swarmed, you know, getting paid. And now paid. they're not. <laughs> and now they're not. As opposed to, I don't know what, you know, they ended up with, but, you know, I look at the George Groves, he's someone that I actually, you know, got to spend some time in the gym with when I was with McGuigan. He, he obviously did well from boxing, but 
it's like now there was a point where if he went in somewhere, he'll get swarmed. Now, maybe not so much, you know. We've seen the car crutches. Yes, he's still, you know, a, a personality, you know, but it's not... Well, he's just started a podcast. Crowd. He's just started Agreed. a podcast, hasn't he? Same, because his views are strong, you know? Yeah. And this same is it, and same course. as Josh Gross. Yeah. And, and then you've got people like David Hay, but these guys are all really big celebrities and they had massive, massive nights. So they, they're they ones that, you know, they were able to transcend and maybe go on and do other stuff. However, mm. it's not the old arena. It's not Wembley Stadium anymore. It's now this. But then there's other ones, you know, there's one in particular, you know, he became world champion, I think, um, before I turned pro or in and around that time. Of, his name was Ryan Burnett. I think he was Irish. I know Ryan. And he had a, he had a um, clouding on his brain as well, didn't he? Yeah. Unfortunately, and in my actual life, I've, I, I know two people I'm very close with that, three actually, that are unable to um, box anymore because of different injuries. Mm. And you know, that also put a little stuff in perspective. But so, for example, Ryan Burnett, world champion, whatever. I, I heard he's got a few business stuff going on or family life now, which is, you know, it's wholesome and good. But I always looked at that stuff and I just thought, you know, Boxing is amazing and, you know, it's probably the highest profit thing that I can do at, at this stage. You know, I wasn't, I'm not like a computer whiz or like a, uh, you know, anything else in, in that aspect. However, I think if you're smart with whatever money you get, you know, you'll be able to make it, make money. So, for example, if I'm, you know, 30 now and I get a property that is bringing in, 5% return on investment. There's less just, and five is less than what I would usually go for. But let's say 5%. Within 20 years, I've left that there. I haven't even thought about it. Let's say it's 200. Okay, I've just thrown that over there. Just forget that. Don't spend it on jewellery like I have done. Don't spend it on, no, you know, no need. cars. No need. Leave that there. No. Guess what? In 20 years, God willing, I'm still alive. It's paid itself back. And then there's another pot of money there. That's just, you know, so... Those are the those are the sort of things that I'm thinking on, and those are the sort of things that I'm acting on. You know, I have obviously my friend Timber to thank as well. He's my uh, lifelong childhood friend, and he's always had that sort of mindset and always tried to instill it. But you know, when you're as you said younger and it's all vigor, and I'm gonna knock this guy out, it's like okay, I can just why wouldn't I just buy this because I'm gonna win the next fight anyway. So it's like now that sort of stuff, and also. I know I'm rambling. I always ramble when I'm talking to you, but I feel like, you know, you bring it out of me. And I think, you know, another thing that I think is really important is that when it comes to, like, um, when it comes to how I feel in terms of, like, the reward for, like, winning a fight, it's like, okay, I, I meant to, I've trained hard, I've won. But then there's another reward when you bought something or invested in something and you see the it. proper reward. It back. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, wow. That is a reward to do something really but with it. This person's just paid me rent. I'm a landlord now. Or someone's just bought this yeah. burger or this whatever. And every time a burger... And you own so a McDonald's now. That is going to happen, yeah? It's got, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. Now they've actually made it a little bit easier. You know, two years ago when I was really pushing for it, they made it... It was, it was quite difficult to do it while you're boxing. But now they've actually... I just had a meeting with them. They've made it a little bit easier. Not for me, just in general. Um, but then there's other franchises as Haven't well. Haven't they I made don't... a burger in your name, though? Didn't they? It's make... not in my name. It's not in my name. It's a vegan burger, but um, it's called the McPlant. Delicious, by the way. But yeah, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, like I said, with, with that stuff, it's like every time someone buys some fries from this place or or, or, or another franchise that, we, that we've got, it's like, I know, I break it down. If the fries cost one pound and I end up, whittling it down and taking 20p for myself, every time I see someone taking some chips from that place, I think to myself, that's for life. Right. Boxing, boxing is for this period, and I'm yeah, going to put yeah. everything I have into it, yeah. and I'm going to love it. But all of our favourite fights, I, I don't know what I'm getting emotional about. It's Stop like, your discourse. No, I'll get, I'll get emotional then instead. Go on, okay. get emotional. Go on, get emotional. But it's just like, I look, like the other day I was blessed enough to meet um, Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah. And it's like, he's one of the greatest fighters that ever lived. Now he's older, he's still able to do stuff. But it's like, he 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 can no longer compete how he was competing back then. That's just how it goes. So for me, I'm, I'll am i be, you know, I don't know, deluded to think, I can keep going to 50, why not? It, it just doesn't go like that. So no, it's like, it won't. You've got three or four more years of boxing at your peak. peak. 
yeah, at your at a peak. And for and me, and then you won't want to box Lawrence. That's mm. how I, that's how I feel. So I love yeah, boxing. I but think I have, but I just think for me, I would never sell myself for boxing. If I go into a fight, it's because I believe I'm going to win. Even if it's a 50-50 fight, I believe there's a chance. There's a there's a tactic to win this fight. And if there isn't, if it's just like, this is impossible, you, you haven't got it anymore, I wouldn't do it to myself. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I just look forward to the next few years, seeing what I can do in, in, in boxing and making sure that all of these boxers continue getting ticked um, outside of boxing. So when I'm finished, you never have to see me doing jobs and stuff that I don't want to do. I always feel like I'm writing your book when I'm interviewing you. Um, yeah, help me. Um, the, 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 it's funny you say that. I mean, I mean, just breaking it down, what you've just said, all you've talked about is you know that your health, your physicality are what is what make your living at the they those two things make your living at the moment. It's an inherently dangerous sport. Agreed. You mentioned Ryan Burnett there, you mentioned guys coming out and that look, those guys you mentioned are still trying to be relevant. No, not trying to be relevant. I don't mean rude. Hey. Uh, they, they they want to be relevant in the boxing world and there's a market for people. Everyone's got a podcast now. It's it's the market. Yeah. Um you want to invest for the future. Um then there's the other side of the coin at the moment. I mean, you are probably as mystified as I am. I know you have aspirations to go up to heavyweight eventually, that Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk isn't being made at the moment because yeah. they're both pricing themselves out of it. It's oh, extraordinary, right? really, when, well, they they don't not want to fight each other, but one is demanding a certain amount of money or a percentage of the fight, and the other's demanding a certain amount. Maybe the prices are inflated because of what you six earned in Saudi Arabia or what um, Tyson Fury might have been uh, might have earned in Saudi Arabia if the fight had gone there. Wembley Stadium. Wembley Stadium for the Wembley undisputed Stadium. heavyweight championship of the world where they're going to earn minimum, I would say, 25 and 15 million each. Yeah, They are great. wrangling over it. I mean, yeah. for someone in your position, could you ever imagine being in that position or could we all be in that position that we earn so much for one fight or two fights or three fights that we go, you know what? I earned 35 million last time. I am fighting for 15 million now. Mm. That is, I guess, I guess mm -hmm. it's perspective. Yeah, you're definitely right about that. Um, it's tough. I mean, I've had it at um, stages in my career with different, very, very different numbers, but still um, the, the same mindset. However, I think if you're realistic, there's some fights that I know of mine that are going to make a lot more than other ones. So as long as you think to yourself, okay, this is a great fight. For example, Uzit versus Anthony Joshua. You know Anthony Joshua is a big star. You and him, it's going to make X. As long as you're able to sort of differentiate that from the next one, so if you box um, Dylan White or someone, it's like it's not going to be as big, but you so you can't command as much money. But it's very difficult to 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 sort of should they have be that having mindset. that fight though? Should it be of glory course. over over of over course. money at this point? Of course, but well, of course, in my opinion, of course they should. You know, there is obviously um, you know the life after boxing, and who doesn't want. 10 more million or 5 more million. It's obviously, it's, it's completely life-changing. However, I always feel like, unfortunately in life, a lot of times opportunities get missed because of stuff like this. So mm -hmm. anything can happen. You could be going on a run, hurt yourself. You could walk down the road, a building falls down. Like anything can happen. And although you wish positivity on your life, you have to also be realistic and say, mm, am I going to let this one slip? Like Uzik must be thirty six by now. Thirty five. Yeah, he he's older than he's older than Fury. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, although he's a great athlete, kept himself in great shape, and did very well against Anthony Joshua, has he got another twelve months to be waiting around, hoping for this fact to happen? Does he want to risk it against another heavyweight? Because although Uzik did very well against Anthony Joshua, another heavyweight, um, as we saw with um, Chisora, might come with a different style and give him yeah. a, give him a nightmare. And in boxing, it only takes one good punch in the wrong place, and everything's everything has changed. So, do you do you? If you're, I'm just thinking more in the I, I mind of Uzik. Do you risk it and argue for extra money, and then maybe miss out on on the opportunity completely? If you're Fury, he's obviously a little bit younger, and he's a, he's a big star on his own. Not saying Uzik's not, but 
Fury, no, Fury is a bigger star, but Usyk's yeah. a star for different reasons. All the Ukraine, uh, the way he stood up with Ukraine and been on the front line and how he's yeah. carried himself. Yeah. They're both stars for different reasons, completely agree. But in the sport, I think yeah. Fury is a bigger star at the moment. Agreed. And in terms of how much money they can make with or without each other. Mm -hmm. So Fury, okay, well, I forget, was it? I'm still going to make 15 mil, 10 mil, yeah. five, whatever. He's still fine. Um, so it's a tough one because obviously I want to see that fight. I just, I like glory. You know, I like seeing um, undisputed fights. I like seeing Jess Taylor do it. I like seeing Errol Spence do it. I like seeing Uzik do it, even though it was in my weight class before my time. And, you know, I look, wow. That's like that day, you know, when they all take that picture with all the belts, when AJ had three out of the four belts, it's like, you, you, you know what I mean? It's like, although, you know, you don't want to put too much stock on, the belt itself, but just that 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 title of like undisputed or unified. It's like you stand there and you know every, all other people in my weight class want what I have, and I have the only keys to it. So hopefully they get it done. Yeah, quite simply. I only have three more questions today. I've only asked you two so far, by the way, which is not bad. Um, but it's a deep. It's always narrow and deep with us. We always go deep on these subjects, don't we? And I and I really appreciate that with you. Um, I assume you're in Miami because that's where you're training with Sugar Hill, yeah? Yeah, we're in Florida. Just a bit out of Miami, though. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Why Sugar Hill and how did that come about? I mean, I think it's a fantastic formation just Thank right you. for you. Why, why Sugar Hill and and where did that emanate from and evolve from? Well, two things. Um, the first one is the um, Fury connection. Um, I sparred Fury before the first Wilder fight. And I remember what I thought of him. I thought big guy, um, good skill. Like he 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 dealt with everyone else, and they, or the, not disrespectfully. And I felt like I felt like I it really gave me a lot of confidence sparring him. Then, then I watched his second fight, and I thought this is a different human being. You know, mm -hmm. um, he wasn't notoriously a, a big puncher throughout his career. He's um, been more interested in being quite awkward and like slipping shots um, and like defensive as opposed to using the full attributes he's got of being 6'9", 200 and whatever pounds, and being able to box um, uh, at range with with, with, with with good hard shots. And we've seen that his last few, like, you know, dropping Wilder several times, winning by TKO twice, I think, you know, then beating Dylan White in, in the fashion that he beat Dylan White made it look very, very easy, very, very comfortable. And then obviously him versus Chisora, although he had beaten him twice before, it was, you know, it was um very, it was different. A, yeah. very different. So those ones I was like, oh, do you reckon maybe I could get that kind of style? Um, that was one. Then obviously Ben Ben Whitaker, who's um, you know, a GB guy who I who I watched, who's very, very te technically sound and very um creative in terms of his movement style, you know, slipping shots, come back with a shot. But then, you know, he sort of Although it's still early days, he refined it and, you know, he's boxing really strong in, in points and then going back to the creative stuff. So I just thought with those things, the fact is I'm six foot five um, and athletic. So I'm able to like get away with so much. Like I watch myself, old videos of me sparring, old videos of me in the bad tags and bad pads and bags. And I just think I can see how I got to be a world champion just off physicality because it's hard to, it's hard to understand unless you're actually up against me. So the, like when I knock into someone and they fall back or I hit someone and they feel it or um they think I'm there but then I take a step back, step back in, you know, and but for me, I just know I just believe it's it, it had it has a limit to how much you can get away with that. You yeah. know, um just being a, a raw athlete with some good tactics. Um so I kind of wanted to refine it because by the time I got to heavyweight I won't be able to dive in and out or take the same physical risk or, or get away with certain lapses in just um, togetherness. So I kind of wanted to work on that. So I, was, I looked for different cultures, long story short, that I felt kind of matched the sort of um, the sort of deficiencies I think I had. And he's one was was the best. And then coming in and actually training with him, it, it, I've never been so like... Did you reach out to him though? Did you reach I, out to him or...? I got I got Ben to reach out to him. Ben yeah, Whitaker, ben said, good, yeah. Come on, put me up. Um, he we obviously had a couple of conversations on the phone. 
he was cool. And then we just took the gamble, did it, did a few weeks, and I thought, you know what? Yeah, I'm in. Um, just and even just this camp, you know. It's yeah, like, so how long have you worked with him, and what's 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 changed uh, for you? What can you describe about what what you guys have worked on together? Much as he is a fantastic guy, because I've spent time with him at in fight camps and away from fight camps. Yeah. Well. And he's a fascinating guy, a former yeah. policeman, the whole steward family, all that cronk stuff. And he's a very dry character. Yeah. I mean, he had some very digging debates with me about things. Yeah. I, I feel like he's fantastic to talk to about boxing. No, great. And, and, and it goes a long way. And that, that's, that, that, that matters, you know, um, being able to talk boxing, really get into the history of it, really. I mean, me and him, we have a meeting um, in 40 minutes where he said, come to the gym, we're not going to box today, we're going to talk boxing, we're going to watch boxing, and yeah. we're going to have that conversation. And that stuff goes a long way, you know, in terms of when someone tells you to do something, if they've also got film reference that you can see other fighters doing it successfully, or you can envision yourself doing it, or you do it once or twice, uh, and then you, you build out confidence from it. So it's been maybe two, two months, two and a bit months that we've been working. So um, education... Um, and you respect him and you like the things he's showing you. Agreed. Did he and, change you or not? Yeah, I think, uh, but only for the better. You know, he <laughs> is someone that uh, enjoys and likes my sort of awkward style. Um, he just, he, and he, he understands what I'm trying to do. And sometimes I'm, it's just off. It's just, it's just off. I, I don't know, like, it's hard to explain. You know, when I, I can see stuff in the ring, but I can't get to it. Like, I, I, something I've known, even in fights and sparring, is that I've got enough to dominate most most men my size. Mm. Um, but it's like it's off. And I watch my fights back, and I'm like, okay, that was a good performance. That wasn't. What's up? Like something's just not clicking. I can keep winning, and that's all that matters. You know, you say, oh, all that matters is winning. But really, in my heart, I would like to. I'd like to go down as one of the better fighters out of Britain. Do you know what I mean? I, I would like that. Let's be honest. Um, just for my own ego. Um, and so when my future kids look back and they say, Lawrence, look, it's like, my dad was a really good fight. That's what I want. So um, anyway, back to Sugar, it's like um, the stuff that we've been working on this period, it's like I'm almost, I, I don't know, I almost want to fast forward to like two years when I'm what he sees and what I think I see that he sees and I'm able to demonstrate that because I don't think I'll do it all in this next fight. I'll just maybe make some small improvements. Two years, I'm assuming you're thinking, and he's already thinking and talking about heavyweight championship by then. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, because he's seen me in there with heavyweights um, now. Um, he's seen me in there with cruiserweights now. And um, there's not much difference. Obviously, you have to be a little bit more cautious when you're in there with a heavyweight in terms of what's coming back. But in terms of just overall my athleticism, even with guys similar height and size, it's like I'm very physically strong. Like, does he like, agree with you though, Lawrence, that you that, that you should move up to heavyweight? Yeah, he does. But like I said, once he saw me in, he seen me in there with cruiserweights, and he's like, it's not disrespectful. It's quite easy. Um, so he's just like, okay, cool. I don't, I don't have no problem here. We just need you. To, I just need you to like. So even if I'm dominating a spa, if I can call it that, he wants to see particular things. Um, so if I'm even if I'm thinking I'm landing three shots and I'm stepping back, it's like no, I get it, but we need you to be doing this because of the next guy, not mm -hmm. just this guy. We need you to be doing this for the heavyweights where you can't just stand there and throw three shots and then hold or push off. We need you to be making clever decisions. He's like, I need a smart fighter, not a physical fighter. So I'm like, damn, wow, okay. And then we talk boxing and it's like, you know what, I am smart enough to do this stuff, so I need to go and execute. But in, in terms of heavyweight, he's seen me spar a few heavyweights. Um, and like I said, like most heavyweights aren't m that much bigger than me. You know, they might weigh more, but they're not uh, like that much wider or that much heavy. Like I might, I'm able to make 200 pounds, but if I want to, I could be... 240 if I do you know what I mean I could be 230 um pounds so you know he knows the, the weight won't be too much of an issue and the athleticism pays off and 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 my sort of grit as well um I've got a lot of grit I don't like to show it often but you know I can get caught with good shots and keep going or you know anything can happen and I believe I'm going to be able to 
you know, um, for example, I've never been knocked down in a professional fight, but I believe, you know, depending on the knockdown, I'll be able to get up, compose myself. Okay. 10 seconds can be a long time, depending on what punch it is. Get up and keep going, you know. So, you know, we're, 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 we're rocking and rolling, man. Um, some short answers to a few questions on the Cruiserweight division now. Um, David Light, March 25th. What do you know of him? And what are you expecting of yourself in this fight? WBO Cruiserweight defence. Yeah, well, I know he's um, a fit guy, um, durable. Um, and the part of the world he's from, you know, uh, in Australia, a lot of the guys there are like strong, you know, rugged kind of guys that, you know, so for him to have emerged out of that tells me he can take a good punch and he's, he's up for a, a good a good dust up. He won the Commonwealth, you know, silver. So he knows how to box. That's one thing for certain. And the uh, the annoying thing for me is that he'll be able to adapt. You know, to win a, a, a medal in any amateur games means you box a tall guy, a short guy, a this guy, that guy. So the different looks I give him, he's going to be able to adapt. Not uh, not enough, but he'll be able to, you know, maybe step back, dip, maybe come in, smother. So I'm expecting him to really um, not be there to be taken out early. Um, but I have to sort of break him and break him down um, to get it done. So what I expect from myself, I expect from myself to put on quite a um, clinical performance. It, it, um, yeah, I think that's the, like, I, I was thinking destructive, but I think it's going to be quite clinical. Um, just based on the fact that he's going to come with a lot of vigour. Um, he's going to also understand what I bring to the table in terms of um, punching power, in terms of speed, in terms of length. So he's going to have done the whole two, three months camp worrying about slipping, getting on the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe staying two steps out so I have to come in and fall over my shot. So he's going to be trying to find different angles. So for me, it's about staying in my lane. So what I have to do, like, a, you know, a horse with the blinkers, what I have to do, I have to do. So I expect to just put on a clean, like, systematic performance where everything is, like, okay, controlled. Even if something doesn't go my way, Okay, back to what I'm meant to do, and eventually what I'm doing will break down um, David Light, and hopefully I can get the KO. Do you think Badu Jack uh, will fight you in a unification this year, or do you think he'll go back to the Middle East and face Ilumba Makabu in a rematch? I mean, if he's contracted to the Makabu one, it'll probably be that one. Um, I think he did well, uh, and he's accomplished everything he he, he said he wanted to. Um, do I, think, I don't think he'll fight me unless it's massive money. And I think I need to still do more to be what these guys consider massive money, you know, real cash outs. Even if you give someone a million or whatever, I think that these guys are, you know, they've heard the Canelo name and they think maybe there's three million there. Maybe there's five. Million. I don't know. Um, so we'll see. I guess it depends on the options that he has, really, and how Would much they're you fight Canelo? Uh, I would, of course, I would. Why, why In would a heartbeat, I take it, yeah. Yeah, like quite simply, uh, I'm thinking of life after boxing, and even in the ring, like he'd be, he'd be very small. But um, yeah, I don't see that fight happening. But would Canelo box someone like Badu Jack? Potentially, I don't see why not. Um, that guy, he's come up from, you super know, middle. Su super middle, yeah. like. So it's like he, he, like I, like I said, I've seen Badu Jack in person. You know, me and him have trained in the same gym. He's not a massive um cruiserweight by any means, do you know what I mean? So I think Canelo, Canelo might fancy it and he might fancy an opportunity to win another belt in another weight class. Same way Roy Jones boxed, um, is it Andy Ruiz? Uh, not Andy Ruiz, what is it? Some, John, John Ruiz? John Ruiz, yeah. Yeah, boxed John Ruiz. He's a smallish heavyweight. This Who's is it. Smallish so heavyweight and not one. very mobile and not very mobile. Yeah, so you take that one and you don't bother boxing Lennox, but you get to say, I won the heavyweight world title. So, same yeah. way he might just do that and see if he can win a cruiserweight one. So, yeah. So, I know it's meant to be quick, but that's my answer. Um, What happens when you and Richard Riakpour step into the ring together? We've seen you at Creed 3, banging it out with each other. Um, I, People said that was staged. I want to ask whether it was or not. No, I don't I don't think that I would stay something with someone like Richard. Um, Forget that guy. But, yeah, in terms of um the fight, I, I actually expect it to be quite... um one-sided in my opinion um i think no matter what you have to respect someone who's got you know that kind of range that kind of punching power um but i think that just 
watching him, um, the attributes that I have sort of completely, I don't say completely, but they nullify a lot of what he does well. Um, he's got very good timing. He's got very good sort of punch selection um, when someone dives in on him. He's got good control of his left hand in terms of, you know, the jab and putting people in places. He's a good fighter, very good fighter, actually, if I'm honest. Um, but I just think, obviously, where we'll both match up height-wise, height, right, height wise, um, and he'll have to respect my punching power as well. So it's like he, he won't be able to just stand there and do what he wants. It'll be... It'll be uh, uh, it'll be it'll basically be a fight of positions. Long story short, and I think that my position will be a lot better than his. And when I start unloading on him, he'll start unraveling. But everyone will say they're a dog until it's time to show it. A final one on that. Just um, has there been talks? Obviously, you're both with the same promoter on the same platform with Boxer and Sky. Um, has there been any talk about the potential of that fight happening this year? Yeah, there's loads of chitter chatter. Um, yeah. but it all depends on me beating um David Light. But then you know, like the like for, for me, it's like I don't want to be chasing these guys. You know, it's yeah. like I'm I've you won one more yeah. time. Yeah, so it's like I I say, hey, is that fight happening? Oh well, we're seeing stuff. Uh, so as soon as I don't hear the real energy, like you can come up to me at Creed or you can, I need to feel that energy for real, man. Otherwise, it's just it's just this is this, you know. I want it, and it's just like because I, as I'm sure, okay, we can all rank people however you want to rank them. Yeah. No way he can look at me and say that's an easy fight. No way. Um. No way. So he'll be thinking, "Ah, oh, Macabre is it easy? Ah, oh, no, Daddy Jack maybe. Ah, oh, um, maybe Jai. Maybe uh, so it's like win a world title and then maybe unify. So I get it, but I don't get it, you know, because I know when I was coming up, it was anyone that was available and offered me a world title would have got it. So, you know, whatever. Final and also, they're older than me. Sorry, he's yeah. older than me. Well, when is the Friday one in there? He's, he's older than me. So, um, it's getting, he's getting on a bit. Final one. It's a little bit left field. You're in America. Last weekend, John Jones came back in the UFC after three years away from light heavyweight, 205, which is in MMA, up to yeah. heavyweight and won the... Uh, the, the UFC heavyweight title, as you know, I've yeah. followed and covered UFC for a long time. I know you dip in and out of it as well. Did a little bit of you when he did that think, hmm, honest answer, that's what I'm going to do in boxing. Oh, yeah, no, 100%. 100%. That, but you're a very similar there. build to John. Agreed. In terms Agreed. of you at Cruiser and him at Light Heavy, because I know you both, um, you know, having been, you know, in the same vicinity with you, you're yeah. both very similar in stature. Agreed. Yeah. Like, I've, che I've checked his re I've checked everything because I, I remember when he first started, he's only a few years older than me and he was winning like the UFC at like 21. Yeah. So I've been watching him for the last 10 plus years just as a yeah. fan. And um, I was just thinking, 205, he's my way. My yeah. son. Yeah. I would never fight him in the street. No way. Like, do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, I've always been sort of a, a, a fan and supporter of him. Um, him going in and winning it in that fashion, you know, first two minutes, submission. Like, you know, it, it kind of let me think, you know what? Size isn't everything, you know. Um, size isn't everything, so, you know, I, I don't see why not. Do you think he should be called mixed martial arts goat? I, I see him as the greatest of all time. I, you... I, I also do. You know, obviously, anyone can talk about whatever you want outside of the cage. But in the cage, I haven't seen anyone from 21 to 30, whatever he is right now, dominate a sport, so many defences, so many different styles, so many different eras. It's sort of like what Mayweather and Pacquiao did. They beat era 90, 2000, 2010. So it's like, and now even Mayweather's still going on now and Pacquiao talks with, you know, Connor or whatever. So it's like, there's so much, um, there's so, basically, long story short, I think he's he's my personal um, MMA GOAT. Um, but, you know, everyone has their, their flavour. Lawrence, it's great to see you as always. Can't wait to see you in fight week over here. You're on top form as always. Love your words. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you so much.